Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Gantro's Garage. Once again, in Gantro's Garage, here we are back in the garage. We've got the door open for some natural light. And today we're going to finally be performing some heart surgery on this poor little Audi A2. Mm, there's nothing actually wrong with the timing belt. The timing belt was changed not that long ago before we got the car. However, the water pump... The water pump developed a leak. We thought we had some kind of coolant leak somewhere. We were checking absolutely everything. Every couple of hundred kilometers, we had to top up the coolant reservoir. Thankfully, on the Audi A2, it's on that side, and so you don't have to take up as much, take out as much rubbish on this side to get to everything. Yeah, but we kept losing coolant, and we couldn't work out how. And then suddenly, we had a catastrophic coolant uh, leak. And couldn't work out where it was coming from. We could see coolant under the car, under the engine tray, but we couldn't see anything up here. We couldn't be checked all the hoses. And of course, normally the last place you would think to look is the water pump. But after, um, after eliminating everything else from the search, the only place it could be was the water pump. So um, with some digging around and some endoscoping and things like that, we did find eventually that the water pump itself had sprung a leak. And that's not really very good at all. So um, you could, of course, just go in there and replace the water pump. But um, it's such a faff to get in there and you've got to remove pretty much everything anyway. You've got to remove the tension to the timing belt anyway. So you might as well just replace the whole lot. So today we're going to do a timing belt service on the A2, which involves replacing not one but two timing belts because this is a 16 valve engine. Uh, there are two camshafts and obviously it requires well, all engines are two capsules, but you know what I mean. It requires, um, there's, a, there's a belt that runs down to the crank, and then there's another belt that joins the cams. So that's all got to be done today. That's the easy part of the job. Unfortunately, the difficult part of the job, well, um, yeah, we ran into some difficulties. In preparation for this video today, we tried sort of, you know, making sure that we could get to everything, making sure that everything would work, loosen, and so on and so on. The bolt down on the crank, the crankshaft down there was not going to budge. We tried everything. I had neighbors here to help. We had various people trying to hold the engine while someone else was trying to loosen the bolt. It would not work. Eventually we had to get hold of a heavy duty, heavy duty gun basically um, with 3,500 Newton meters of torque. You know, the kinds of things you use for trucks and you know, really heavy duty, uh, heavy duty vehicles. Um, and only then using the full torque of that thing, you know, one of those battery powered Milwaukee guns, absolutely amazing. I think I might get one at some point in the future. Complete overkill for normal things, of course, but um, maybe it's little brother with 1500 Newton meters, that might be better. But yeah, we needed all three and a half thousand Newton meters to get that blooming bolt loosened up. Unfortunately, in the process, while we were trying to do it manually, the crank clicked a few turns on itself. And while the crank clicked at the top, we had the cams here locked so that they were in position. Unfortunately, that means the timing is now out. So not only are we going to have to replace the timing belts, we're going to have to reset the timing. So that's the first thing we're going to do. As soon as we get the belt off, we're going to reset um, the... Um, timing to top dead center, cylinder number one. And before I do anything else, I'm going to turn the end, I'm going to put the belt then back on and turn the engine a couple of times just to make sure that everything's all right. And we don't have any that, that, you know, those few clicks we did that no valves were caught on the way past, you know what I mean? Uh, so hopefully everything is all right. So that's going to be part one of our, of our odyssey today. And while we're at it, I'm actually going to replace the tensioner as well. Um, of course, you've got your timing belts, but you also have your normal accessory belt. And the accessory belt pulley, or the accessory, accessory belt tensioner, um, the bearings had gone in that, and it was making a right racket. So that's going to be replaced as well. And apparently, on an Audi A2 with the 1.4 litre petrol engine, that's an absolute pig to get at. I don't know yet, but we're going to do that later. First things first, make sure the engine's actually in the right position, timing-wise. Right then, here I am down on the floor, and um, I'm doing this because I have to show you the crank here, and I hope you can see this with the lighting. Uh, 
we've had to get some dodgy lighting. Now, obviously the crank is going to turn, oh, hello, there's my finger. Um, the crank is going to turn twice for every revolution of the cams at the top. And now normally the timing, the timing should be <laughs> set here, top dead center. There'll be a little mark up here. I can't see it from here, obviously. We can see it from above though. And one of these teeth on this crank sprocket has a slightly chamfered edge and ideally that would be up here at the moment as well because um, the timing is set. The cams are sort of at their locked position and that's absolutely fine. However, we have clicked round one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There it is. There's the chamfered edge down there. That should be over there. So that's basically a quarter of the turn of the valves from the crank. So it shouldn't actually be too shouldn't be too catastrophic. And obviously, um, obviously, we did it by hand, getting this thing loose. Yeah, this thing was an absolute pig to get loose. Uh, so this was going to have to be turned back round to try and get it um, to work, to get the timing to work. So the first thing is I'm going to loosen the tensioner, get the belt off here, put that in the right position, put the belt back on, turn the engine and make sure there's no interference. Now, because we did this by hand and the engine wasn't turning itself under its own steam, then not too much, if any, damage should have been done. And certainly no bending of valves should have taken place because there's, you know, there's no, the amount of effort you can, um, you know, apply when you're trying to move these things is definitely not going to affect the valves. At least let's hope not. That's going to be the first thing to do. Let's get it done. Right then, so here we are back at the top end of the engine. And let me show you, I've got the GoPro here so I can show you what's going on. Um, these were just marked so that we can make sure that these sprockets weren't moving while we're trying to loosen the, um, the cam nut. Um, yeah, this is a rather annoying feature of this engine. The timing belt runs through the engine mount. This thing here is the engine mount. So first thing we have to do is remove this part of the engine mount. Then we remove this part of the engine mount. And that lets us get access to the various pulleys and tensioners of the timing belt itself. And here's the second timing belt, the one that joins the cams and does what it has to do. So all of this has to be removed. And of course, because I'm removing the engine mount here, we need to take the weight of the engine, which is why earlier you saw I had um, my car jack and a piece of wood under the engine sump to hold things up. Joy. Right then, so there are three bolts holding this on. I've cheated, I've already loosened everything. So we just need to get them removed. Right, that's already loosened. The engine just moved a tiny little bit, but that's fine, it's on the jack. What could possibly go wrong? Well, knowing my luck, everything. So let's get that loosened, and then we have to, of course, remove it from this part as well. Very strange system, if you ask me. Thankfully. Thankfully, access to this is much easier. If you're doing this on a Volkswagen Polo, or a Volkswagen Golf, or a Skoda Fabia, or a Seat, whatever, they all have the same engines, this little 1.4 engine. And um, to get to this part, the engine mount, you have to remove all sorts of things. You have to remove the coolant bottle. You have to remove, oh, God knows what else. It's really rather annoying. But I'm rather impressed that on the Audi A2 so far, it's very easy to get to everything. All I removed here was the air intake pipe. That's it. There it is over there. I just removed the air intake pipe, which was in the way. And that was it. Right, for some reason, that's a nut on this side, the actual motor mount part of it. So let's not lose that. And then this part should just lift off. So there's the engine mounting bracket. These are 16 millimeter bolts which we find throughout the engine here. 16 mil, not bad. Let's put that in a safe place. So that's given us slightly more access. That's at least given me access now to the tensioner. So I'm just wondering if for purposes of timing checking, we should just loosen the tensioner first and then re-tension. I think that's maybe not such a bad idea. And then just, just check that everything's in the right position. What do you think? Shall we do that first? That's probably the better idea. Right, back downstairs. Right, here's our cam and here is our tensioner. And what I'm gonna try and do is just loosen the tensioner, which should be able to be loosened quite easily. Oh, bloody hell. 
Ah, he said famously, it should only be 20 Newton meters holding it. Uh, seems to be rather a lot more. And loosening it, let me try it with the other end. Oh. Bleeding out. Oh, that's on way too tight, people. And of course, you can't really get a socket in on it because it's far too tight. Okay, I'm gonna have to get some something at it to hit it. I managed to loosen that enough so I could actually get the belt quickly off. I'm just going to pull this off the tensioner as well. So that it comes around from the water pump, around the tensioner. It's quite difficult to see. I'll just poke it out of the way for now. Up here, there we go. Here's that chamfered bit. Oops. Here's that chamfered bit I was talking about there. That should be over there. So I'm going to turn the engine and hope to hell that nothing happens. Right, I hope you can see this all right. Can you see that down there? Let's see if I can get the camera in at a better angle for this. Yes, there we are, perfect. See that? Someone's put little tipex marks on there already, which is a good sign. And I don't know if you can see that chamfered little bit, but it lines up with that part. There's a little sort of mark on the engine block. I don't know if you can see that. I'll, I'll, put them, I'll put arrows on it in the video so you can see. But someone's already marked that. So what I'm going to do is go and get my tipex, um, refresh those marks, and then we can recheck the timing. Yes, this looks good. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually loosening off the uh, rest of the engine mount. Get that off. The sort of bracket that holds the whole thing on. So four very long screws, bolts, that hold it in. This just gets me access to everything. I've just decided, by the way, just to go ahead and change everything now because I'm this far in, I've got the belt off, I checked the timing, I've got the cams locked, everything's done at the right position down below. So uh, we should be absolutely fine. What I will check in a minute is that cylinder number one is up at top dead center, because there is of course the risk that the engine could have gone through 180 degrees. That would definitely not have been good. Let me just quickly remove this tool. So there's the other half of that engine mount, that bracket. It's annoying how incredibly large these things are. I'm going to wash all this up as well. Tidy everything up before I put it back in. Oops, didn't want to do that. These bolts are different lengths, so it's quite important that you... Actually, I don't think they are. Are they? Just looks like they are. I don't know. Anyway, so right now, as you can see, that belt is now loose. And there it is, it's off. And let's have a look. Ah, the belt itself is in pretty good condition, actually. It wasn't on for that long. It's a little bit tatty on the inside. And of course, it's, oh, oh no, it's not. There's a split there. Ooh. I suspect all the coolant, you can see a bit of rusty water on it. I suspect all the coolant that dripped on that over the past month. I reckon that's probably what caused the problems. Well, that water pump is dead. Oh, can you hear that? Oh my goodness me. Okay, this was seriously time to get this done. Brilliant. Right, grab my Tipex and I'm going to mark everything up. Um, I've checked that cylinder one is, come on, up. It's nice and up, cylinder four as well. Cylinders two and three are down, so that's fine. So we're in the right position, top dead center. Uh, we're not 180 degrees out. So that's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remark what whoever was in there before. Someone's been in here before. Oh, what's that? Someone's been in here before and has done this themselves. What I'm going to do, oops, that's wrong. I can hardly see what I'm doing here. It's almost impossible to get in at this. Yeah, that's good. So that's that marked nicely. So I can see exactly where I am. And what I'm going to do, 
I'm actually not going to bother marking these here because there's not really any chance of them moving. They're in exactly the right position. The locked, the locking tool. It's a great thing, this, this locking tool. Um, just very simple two pins with a little sort of bridge between them. And when the cams are at the right position, this sort of, you can feel it, it sort of goes through the cam and then it actually goes all the way through in behind to like part of the block. And you know it's exactly right when both of those pins are nice and deep. The heads are at the same. That's why that bridge is there. You can pull it backwards and forwards to make sure that they're in all the way. And then, of course, there's like half a millimeter of movement. You can move it a little bit. But the idea is that they're definitely in. Wonderful. So nothing can go wrong now. Okay, so here we are inside the engine again. And here you can see this tool nicely in. It's, these are these little holes that line up perfectly when everything's in time. And then it's all the way in there. So down here we can see the culprits of what we're doing here. So here's this idler and that's not got much of a bearing left on it. Underneath that is the water pump and look at that. You can spin that freely and you can hear it. That's dead. There's quite a bit of play in it as well. Here's another idler and that's pretty loose as well. Okay, so it was definitely time to do that. There's the actual tensioner down there, and that's fine. That's, that's still all right, actually. And there's my beautiful Tipex marking down there. There's no going wrong now. So let's get all this junk off and replace it with new stuff. And then we tackle this belt here. So let's get this stupid idler. My God, the torque settings on this. There are very strict torque settings about uh, these things. Very strict torque settings. And they should be adhered to so that nothing goes wrong. I'm guessing the water pump failed because some Charlie too bad but it's pretty grotty um, because some Charlie absolutely thrashed it on and there was no chance no chance getting it off oh is that gonna fit on there is that gonna fit on there yes it is but it's not a 16 oh for heaven's sake what's that then is that a 15 or something or is it even a 13 Probably not. Let's try 13. It's not a 13. Oh, for heaven's sake. Right. Okay, I've got a ratcheting spanner now, 15, so that should hopefully be able to get in at that and loosen that off properly. Yep, there we go. Why can't they just stick to 13 and 16? Why do we have to have so many different sizes? There's a ton of thread locker on this. It's not loosening up at all. Right, come on, off you get. And here we go. Wah. Right. So this is this idler as well. Idler on both sides makes sense. How's this one doing? Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> right, that's definitely toast. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Oh no, hold on, I need to get the tensioner off. Down there. I think I've loosened that up enough. That was 13, wasn't it? Yes. So that's loosened enough. I can actually just remove that completely by hand. Come on. I'm amazed at the amount of room in here to work. It's not bad at all. Here's the tensioner. Very clever little tensioner. It's got this sort of crab's claw here. So let's see. Oh, that's actually fine. Look at that. That's got plenty of life left in it. Um, it's quite clever. Um, there's this, oh, the spring's not very good on it, though. Oh, God, that's far too loose. Um, bearing's good, though. Yeah, this claw, like that, that sits over a bolt in the actual engine block, so it can't move, and then you tension it like that. 
with this hex bolt here. Pull that round and tension it. That works perfectly and then everything is works absolutely fine. That's what tensions that belt. Right, that's dead so that can go away. Right then, now it's time to remove the water pump. This is where things could get messy. Now, what do I need in there? Is that going to be, I think that's probably an eight millimeter hex. I'm guessing it's an eight millimeter. Let's find out. Okay, six millimeter water pump time. So the water pump is, of course, probably going to have some liquid still in it. So I have a handy dandy. Oh, is that going to work? Yeah, that's going to be perfect. That's going to catch anything that comes out. Okay, hold on, that's, that's out, so that's not good. Pop that back in. Actually, to be honest, don't need that. Right, let's break this open. Oh, God, that was hardly in at all. Okay, so that's the top one loosened. I'm going to go downstairs and loosen the bottom one. Right, here we go. I've loosened the two water pump bolts. Let me get the GoPro in on this because it's going to be quite good fun. Right, I have no idea if you can see this at the same time. I'm going to jiggle the water pump, loosen it. I have a feeling, however, yeah, as I thought, as I thought, it's absolutely jammed solid. So what they've done is, oh, Rotten swines. That should just pop out easily. Ah! Oh. oh no! What they've done is they've sealed it on. I'm willing to bet they've sealed it. It feels like it's sealed. Let's listen a little more. That is not going to move. See if we can get something in there to lever at it. Oh, there it is. Right. Let's let that run. There's not going to be much in there, like I said before. And what it is, it's going to be mainly just water. Because over the past month, we've just been topping it up. As you can see, hardly anything came out there. No Loctite. Right. One old water pump. And a lot of water. Good. Why? The water pump is actually slightly damaged. Someone had bent something here. And as you can see, there's absolutely no bearing in that whatsoever anymore. There's a fair bit of play in it, and the seal, the seal is flat as a pancake. Down in there, a bit of sludge, not too much, not too much. Let's get this bracket out of the way so we can see what we're doing. There's this really annoyingly stupid little bracket around there. So we'll look in here. Now that's fine, that's just water, good, there's no gunk in it, right, so I'm going to have to clean all this off, what's left of that. Yeah, the ceiling surface was an absolute disaster, oh my goodness me, and that, can you hear that? That was definitely not doing much, <coughs> the new one, the new one doesn't make any noise at all. It's just, that's just the water. So the, and that's quite difficult, so yes, that's much better. So that seal looks rather lovely. It's already in there. You don't need any more than that. That's all that needs to seal. A lot of people love putting all sorts of, all sorts of crap on there to seal it even further, but that's not necessary. Let me quickly film that and show you. So there you are, there's the water pump out. And you can see sort of around here, there's all this sort of gunk. Yeah, for the old seal was. I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna try it just with a cloth, first of all. I don't think it's baked on. Just go around and clean that surface, get it as clean as possible, so that the new pump and the new seal can do its job properly. This little bracket, this is what I was talking about. This is really so stupid. 
hold on this little bracket here this sort of sits come on this sits sort of here and the water pump sits the water pump bolts sort of go through it i have no idea what the point of it is it's just exceptionally annoying as far as i can tell um anyway get that out of the way for now so we can clean this up and sort everything out good back in a sec okay folks that's the end of part one for now taking everything apart and getting in there hmm that's the end of that the entire video itself was well over an hour so part two is where we get in there and actually get the belts sorted get the new belts on get rid of all the crap that we don't need and put everything in and discover a few more problems along the way obviously that's you know that's just par for the course when you do this as an what did I say at the beginning? An amateur idiot. Yes, that's basically what I am. And then, of course, there's more news. I am currently sitting in the boot, in the trunk, of our new car that we have not yet revealed to the world. Coming very soon. See you for the next one. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks very much. See you next time.